Hello, here we are again, back in Blender. And the truth is, right now while you're watching this video, this node setup isn't actually done. I've finished it a couple of times before for reasons that I've stated already, so I know I can get it done and I have the logic in my head. Um, but since I'm right now kind of improvising along the way and cutting it together to make sense, sometimes it happens that a little mistake um, finds its way into my setup. And well, it's not really a mistake, it's just uh, something in, uh, in service of cleanliness. I would like to take this node group that we've created with all, all our Boolean outputs and split it into two. The truth is that we are not going to address this plus x minus x y value all that often. So I don't really want to see it every time I work with my masks. And therefore I'm just going to duplicate my node group. You actually don't have to follow this step because right now it works and it will work the same way when we are done but I just like it a little bit cleaner. Um, this two here, as you know from other places in Blender now, indicates that there are two instances of the same node, which means right now there are still um, duplicates. So I'm going to hit the two in order to split them apart. Otherwise, every change I would do in this node group would reflect here as well, which is what I don't want. So hitting F2, I can rename it, and I'm going to call this one masks which will determine where our ground walls are and our upper floor and whatnot. And this one, I'm, whoops, this one I'm going to rename with F2 to walls because I only want those four first values here. I will tap into it, bring up the panel with N and I will delete everything but these plus and minus uh, X and Y values. And I can get rid of these three nodes and up here are another three nodes that I don't need anymore now. Um, if you want, you can shift it around a little bit neater. And the other node, we're going to do exactly the opposite. So I'm going to delete these four inputs. One, two, three, four. They are gone. And now I can delete these four and I think those as well. Yes. And now, yet again, a little bit of cleaning up. So now we have two nodes. This building looks a little different because these inputs here have become orphaned or however you want to call it. You can reconnect them, but I'm actually not going to because I think we need to be a little bit more tactical about um, how we're going to determine which part goes where. It's going to be a mess if we just improvise it together. So um, I will cut this connection, sever it, control, right click, drag and bring those two nodes down here. Uh, for now, you know, it, because it just stresses me out mentally to see this mess on the screen, I'm just grabbing an integer node here and plugging it into the instance for now and giving it some value. That doesn't look too terrible. Okay. Now we have this kind of setup going there where we have three inputs in these switches. And that's quite convenient because we have three elements that repeat throughout, which are the corner, the straight wall, and this vertical gap. So I already have a Boolean value for our corners. So I'm going to plug it in here in the switch. And now whenever there's a corner, it will return true. So therefore, everything that goes into here will be a corner. And then we would need a vertical gap mask. So I'm going to tap into this masks group, hit the plus, and actually shift it down a little bit and I will call it V gap for vertical gap. I don't know, is this something sexual? I hope not. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter because YouTube can't demonetize me since I'm not a partner channel. So now I can plug this into switch and whenever this will return true, um, well, this one will obviously then become a vertical gap. And the false one as the only one left will be the straight wall. So now lastly, um, I'm going to select both nodes, hit Ctrl J to put them into a group and rename this frame with F2 to, for example, ground floor. And now I will take a look at my ground floor indices. So I'm going to get it down a little bit. So the ground floor straight wall would be this false input and it has the index of zero. So I'm going to make it zero. The true output remember goes into the vertical gap so this would be a two and this one would be the corner if the corner is true which means it would be a one so this is how my setup i have set up the logic for the ground floor and now we just have to do it a bunch of times if i hold ctrl shift d with node wrangler enabled 
by maintaining these connections. Oh, that's a little bit unfortunate. Um, Alt P, I think, severs them from this group. I don't know why that happened. So, and that is why we've created this empty VGAP input beforehand, just so we don't have to uh, later on connect them manually a couple of times. And we're going to need five duplications of this group because we have one, two, three, four, five different, well, duplicates of this. And now I'm going to do the same thing we just did for the ground floor, for all the other parts. And through the magic of video editing, this is going to be rather quick for me, but you have to do it manually as well. So I am done now. You know, maybe I've punched in the wrong number here or there because I was sloppy, but I hope not. And in the worst case scenario, I'm just going to change it later on. Now we have sorted out how we're going to select corners and straight floors and vertical gaps for all the different layers of the building, I guess you could say. And now we still have to determine how this vertical gap mask looks like, which we are not going to do in this part because it's actually rather logic intensive. So I want to dedicate an own video to that. Um, and we have to separate out these different layers in masks. Um, another thing I'm quickly going to do is I'm going to shift right click drag um, over all these connections, which will kind of put them together into these reroute nodes. Um, I don't know, I just like to do that. So if I ever accidentally delete these masks, I don't lose all those connections and have to <laughs> and have to redraw them. So now let's take a look at how we can address the individual layers. Actually, the roof edge and the ground floor are rather simple. So let's do just that. I will also put these masks into this masks node group. So I'm going to duplicate it yet again, just for cleanliness sake to keep it separate. This time I'm not going to click the two, so I'm going to deliberately leave them uh, as the same node group. So whenever I make change to one of them, it will be reflected in the others and I will tap into them and I will create two no outputs with the plus sign. And well, these are, these are now automatically named VGAP. Uh, I'm obviously going to rename them to ground floor and roof edge. As a matter of fact, let's quickly tap out of here and bring this note group up here. You might still remember this selection note, which I've also now disconnected, I see by accident. I think when we separated the note groups and I'm going to use it yet again as some kind of preview. So if I, for example, connect the ground floor into this now, uh, well, the building is going to disappear because right now it's turned to off. And you maybe remember this node setup that we had in the first or second part, which is the bottom middle, which I'm just going to very lazily duplicate and bring over to the front so you can see it a little better. And I'm just going to plug it into the ground floor, right? And you might remember it was this kind of hole that you can barely see now that's kind of punched out in the center. And we just addressed the center by lowering this epsilon value. However, if I would now increase it back again to 0.71, um, remember, like we had with the other walls, now it selects the entire bottom floor, including these um, instances that we want to be the ground floor. So that's perfect. We are already done. I could now mathematically subtract the bottom middle from there, but I don't think it's necessary. I'm just going to leave it as it is and not make any more notes than necessary. We did the same thing for the roof middle, which we are now also going to treat the same way. So connect the roof middle into the roof edge. And just for preview's sake, I'm going to switch this output here. Um, well, this one isn't inverted by the notch, so it's a little bit uh, more difficult to see, but don't worry. We're just going to do the same thing. I'm going to increase the epsilon to 0.71. And now we have everything selected yet again, including the roof middle, but we don't worry about that. You know what? Thinking about it right now, it does the thing we'd want, which is return true for the roof edge as seen here. However, I have also duplicated this not node for our bottom, which I actually don't need. I don't want to invert this selection. So I'm going to control X and dissolve this node into nothingness. So that's this setup done. So now let's make some space for now. I'm going to move this whole rotation logic from part two or part one or whatever it was over to the right. And I'm going to get myself some switch nodes. I'm just going to duplicate one of these. Um, oh yeah. And now we have to disconnect it from the frame with alt P. Great. And I'm going to put this into 
the instance index. Let's start by selecting ground floor. So the true will now be the ground floor, which on accident actually already has a ground floor mesh in here. But of course, instead of just putting one integer here, we want to put this group output here. So now the actual corner pieces go into the corners and the middle pieces go into the middle. And for false, we could now actually put the middle floor in here, but I'm not going to do it because I already know I also want to put in the roof and the roof middle in there. So um, I'm just straight up going to duplicate this switch node again and plug it in here. And now for the switch boolean, I'm going to put in the roof edge and into true, which is where we expect the roof edge, I will plug in the roof edge, which as you can see, already kind of sets up up correctly. And now into false, yeah, you know what? Yet again, duplicate this switch node, plug it in here. We do still have the upper floors and this ring here. So let's go into masks and just create some proxy outputs for them for now, plus and plus. So let's type in ring and upper floor. Make sure that in the node output group here, they are all set to false. We don't have the logic for that yet. And let's plug in, for example, the ring in here, right? So whatever goes in here would be the ring. Let's connect it up. Nothing is going to happen because the group is right now false. Yet another switch. This time we're going to put in the upper floor, which means the true input would now need the upper floor. And now finally, with no outputs left on these groups, the last one that is false has to be the middle floor. Plug it in here. Great. That looks a lot more finished than last time, though we still have to address this roof center. Take a look for the roof edge right here. So this true input is apparently our point of attack because whatever goes in here also includes the middle of the roof. So we have to separate it out before it goes into here. So I'm going to duplicate the switch and put in the roof middle into the switch. And I'm just going to straight up put in the integer here into true. So which one was that again? That was number 15. Um, there we are. We have our building done. Well, not, not quite yet, because obviously we would like to, to create all those masks, but let's actually make a cut here. And I'll see you in the next video, which is going to be a little bit sooner than last time. I promise I can only record on weekends. <laughs> and, you know, I have a lot of work right now. It's, it's a stressful time for me. I'm sorry. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, until next time.